persecution to try if you if you stand up for the Lord that most likely the righteous will be, will be persecuted and, 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 the, and the teacher just kept, kept on going and if you stand up for Jesus people will mock you, they'll laugh at you, they'll do this, they'll do that, they'll ostracize you and, uh, and the lady finally, you know, she spoke up saying, hey, hey uh, sir, uh, you talk about all this persecution that comes to you. He says, where I work, everybody where I work, they're not Christian, nobody where I work is a Christian. And nobody bothers me. Nobody bothers me, she said. And then she said, in fact, nobody even knows I'm a Christian. I can't believe some of you missed it. <laughs> nobody even knows that I'm a Christian. Nobody even knows. Can you believe she said that? Nobody knows. Because instead of being pure and holy before our master, we find ourselves dancing 
with demons and dying with devils. So God has to judge. And he wants people to see the devil for who he is. It will demonstrate that Satan is the cause or the instigator of war, murder, and deception, and that he deserves God's judgment. No question. So the church needs to understand God will judge them, and we don't we don't we don't want any one of our loved ones to be alone in that party and be judged also. The next one, not only to reveal but also to bring many Gentiles to faith in this. And once it gets hot in the kitchen, once it gets hot in the kitchen, some people are gonna remember. They're gonna remember when somebody offered them a try. And they looked at the track. They're going to remember when someone said to them, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that you will come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. And they mocked them. They're going, to be, they're going to remember when somebody invited them to church and they mocked them. Oh, you want to go to the church where they brainwash you? And, I mean, they're going to remember all the opportunities when they heard Mama praying for them, when they heard Daddy pleading with them. When they heard preachers calling on them, they're going to remember all that. And the Bible says, Gentiles will repent. Gentiles means non-Jews. Gentiles will repent. But here's what you need to keep in mind. They will repent and they will go to heaven. But most of them will be put to death right then and there. Number eight, baby. the last one, wants to demonstrate that God is holy. Notice the list that I have on God is holy. Somebody say God is holy. But not only is he holy, God is also just. He, he's got a good balance. There's a good bookkeeping system in heaven. The Bible says God is also patient. We talked about that already. And God, listen to the last one. God is still on his throne. This is what will happen. All these horrific things have been taking place. And of course the devil would like for people to believe that God is dead. I mean, you've seen the movie, God is not dead. Amen. See, the world wants you to believe that God is dead. And the more uh, horrible things are taking place, the more people could begin to think, well, maybe there isn't a God. Maybe uh, God has been defeated if there is one. Or maybe God is seen out, he's somewhere up in the corner, he doesn't hear, he doesn't see, he doesn't know what's going on. Because things are bad on planet Earth. God is going to orchestrate all of this in his providential workings. So that the devil, the demons, and all the people on earth, and all the people in heaven will understand that God is still on his throne. Somebody say amen. amen. Beginning and first class, Alpha Omega, he is still on his throne. Now make one closing appeal. A closing appeal, number nine, excuse me, to bring men, oh, excuse me, we already looked at it. But let me, let me give you the closing appeal just so we can... Uh, just we can, uh, you know, be ready for heaven, okay? A closing appeal. Based on of Revelation chapter 6, verse 15 to 17, Paul, excuse me, John is used by God uh, to reveal some things as the curtain is open. The curtain is, see, that's a revelation. The curtain is pulled back. And he sees seven classes of society in our society. Seven classes. Notice with me if you want. Then the kings of the earth, that's number one. The princes, that's number two. The generals, the rich people, the mighty, and every slave, those, those of us who maybe are, ins are insignificant according to some people, the slaves of every free man. But uh, it, is, it is something, it's ironic, it's ironic. That while they cry now, acknowledging him who sits on the throne, hide us from him who sits on the throne. They were wanting to hide from him who sits on the throne. In other words, they were acknowledging that one is on the throne. But they did not call upon him for forgiveness and for salvation. It is tragic. It is tragic for people to say, oh yes, I believe in God. And yet never serve God. Oh yes, the church is the church of God. But never attend the church of God regularly. Oh yes, the Bible. But the Bible is at home decorated house instead of cleaning up our lives. Oh yes, I believe. And yet our lives are contrary to what we say. It's tragic. And these seven individuals represent here 
represent the world today. We acknowledge, but don't draw near to him. So, therefore, he concludes with these words. Take it out of 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. Therefore, let us not do what? Sleep. And that's not physical sleep, folks. That's not physical sleep. Let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be so. Now what's, what's one of the things that you'd like to do before, before you die? Do you have a list of things you'd like to see or you'd like to experience before you die? If you're single, you're probably thinking of marriage, oh, you can plan. Or maybe if you're getting to the age of retirement or you're retired, you'd like to travel. Who? I mean, so many people travel. What is it you'd like to see or do before you die? What if you don't get to do it? What if Jesus comes before you? Would you be disappointed? <laughs> oh, Richard's like, I, I, I gotta get married, I gotta get married. Oh, wait, well, Jesus, I put some money into my kids' education. I want to please at least graduate. I want to go to heaven with a certificate of graduation. God, couldn't you wait? Just wait a little bit. You know, but I, I've been with this company for 32 years. At least I want to take my gold watch with me to heaven. <laughs> oh, I think all of that, like nothing, when you look into the beauty, the holiness of His face. Keep it in perspective, church. Keep it in perspective. Would you stand with me? And Father, as we stand in your presence, we say, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We acknowledge that the God of this world is making it tough. According to the book of the Revelation, he understands, he knows the end times, that the time is short. And according to the book of the Revelation, the Bible says that he has increased his activity. The devil is working overtime trying to discourage your church, trying to defuse your church, trying to detour your church, trying to distress your church, trying to depress your church. But God, your church refuses. We want to fight the good fight of God. We want to fight the good fight of faith. So we pray, help us. And I know you will. Thank you for choosing to live inside of us and for promising to be with us always. And thank you for the promise that one day, when you're with us today, one day we'll be with you. Thank you. And my eyes closed. I want to speak a word to. Anyone in this place who maybe is not sure where you would spend eternity if you were to die today or next week or next year, please don't complicate your God loves you. He loves you very, very, very much. He's already demonstrated how much he loves you and that he gave Jesus his son for your soul, for your salvation. The Bible says that we're sinners. Sin separates us from God. The only one who can save you is Jesus. So this is what you must do if you want to be saved. Just ask God to forgive you. Ask God to forgive you for all of your sins. And then ask Jesus to come into your heart. That's all. You say, is that all, preacher? Well, that's where it starts. New birth. And he will help you if you let him come into your heart today. Maybe a simple but sincere prayer like this. Oh, God, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Just pray that to God. God, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. And then say to Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I need, I need to ask. Because this is what he wants for us to be doing. Busy about his business while he tarries. I need to ask. Did anybody in this congregation today say, yes, I want Jesus in my heart. Yes, I want to be saved. If you pray, oh, Jesus, forgive me and come into my heart. Would you lift your hand high so I can see where you are? Just lift your hand high so I can see where you are. If you're asking Jesus to come into your heart, would you raise your hand? 
Anybody? Jesus, I want you to be my heart. I want you to save me. Okay. I don't see a hand. Of course, he sees your heart. Okay. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Brother Todd's going to lead us in this beautiful song, Search Me, O God. If there be any one of us in this place that just, just want to come home for prayer, maybe something like joining the church or being baptized, Maybe you just kind of get your sequence of, maybe you just in your heart you feel, you know what, I'm going to go to the altar and I'm going to kneel or I'm going to stand there and pray for you. 